The entry of Andretti Autosport into F1 in 2026 is creating a massive amount of excitement around the sport. An 11th team on the grid will mean more cars, more action, and more drivers. However, no one has ever said that starting a Formula 1 team is easy, and Andretti is facing some massive issues. Is Andretti's bid to join the sport about to fail? Let's find out. While the on-track action in Qatar was absolutely incredible, there was plenty of excitement off-track as well. It was the first race weekend since the FIA announced that they had accepted Andretti Autosport's application through the Expressions of Interest system. Basically, what the FIA said was, Yep, you guys seem like you know what you're doing. Come and race in our sport. Seems simple enough, right? Well, nothing in Formula 1 is ever simple, and Andretti is still a long way off joining the grid if the other teams have anything to do with it. There are three stages to joining the F1 grid in the current rulebook. Stage 1 is where the FIA invites any new teams to express an interest in entering the championship. In Stage 2, these teams are assessed on their sporting and technical ability, the ability of the team to raise and maintain sufficient funding to allow participation in the championship at a competitive level, and the team's experience and human resources. This is where Andretti is in the process. They've done the easy bit. The FIA wanted them in the sport to begin with, so they started on the front foot. They won't have that luxury in the next stage. In Stage 3, any new team must secure a commercial agreement with Formula 1 management or FOM for short. In the past, some teams have raced in F1 without a commercial agreement in place, but all this changed from 2022 onwards, where it is now very clear that without a commercial agreement, you cannot enter the championship. This is where the Andretti plan looks like it's going to stall. Audi, the other new team joining the grid, are in a very different position. They're buying a team that is already accepted by the FIA and are already a part of the commercial agreement that is known as the Concord Agreement. So Andretti needs to convince FOM and the current grid that they should be allowed into F1. At the moment, the objection to Andretti from within F1 is that they're going to have a negative financial impact on the rest of the teams. This will happen for three reasons. The first is that the value of the current 10 teams will decrease. That is a worry for shareholders who are the real team owners. The second reason is that the money from the Concord Agreement will be split 11 ways instead of 10. That's going to decrease the income of the teams, which you can understand them being against. And the third reason is that with an 11th team on the grid, there will be another team battling for sponsorship, which will drive the cost of sponsorship down, decreasing the amount of money the teams can charge. Again, it's easy to understand why they might not want that to happen. In general, they all seem to be singing from the same hint sheet by publicly saying that any new team should only be allowed if they add value to the championship, and this is something between FOM and Andretti to work out. Basically, if Andretti is going to join, then they want to be sure they won't lose any income. The likes of Toto Wolff and Lawrence Stroll have taken a clear public stance against the Andretti project, but without going too heavily into the details. Lawrence Stroll even made a video like he did when his team were accused of cheating for making a pink Mercedes back in 2020. Williams' James Val went even further over the weekend, explaining why he and his team's owners, Doralton Capital, don't want Andretti to join as an 11th team. He raised a very fair point that while the top three teams are now profitable, there are still several others, Williams included, who are losing money and relying on the owners to top up the pot. Mercedes, for example, have just published their financials showing a profit of over $100 million in 2022. As fans, it's hard to really understand what is going on in this situation because the Concord Agreement and any other kind of financial contract is completely confidential. At the moment, it is widely rumored that about $1.4 billion is divided up between the teams. Of this, it is believed that about $400 million is paid as bonuses to the teams who have won the Constructors' Championship in the past with the remaining $1 billion divided up in the sliding scale amongst the 10 teams. The winning constructor is believed to receive around 14% of this, and the team finishing 10th around 6%. Apparently, the Concord Agreement allows for an adjustment of this sliding scale from 8th to 12th place should there be more than 10 teams on the grid. The math works out that, on average, a team will lose $5 million a year with an 11th team being added. There is the anti-dilution fee of $200 million to be paid by any team joining, but that will only cover the losses for four years. And that won't do anything to offset potential sponsorship losses or team valuation losses. This isn't pennies that are being argued over, it is tens of millions of dollars. Without knowing the exact details, it's hard to give an opinion on whether an 11th team would be good or bad for the sport at the moment. 
As a fan, I want to see more cars on track. But if that means in a few years' time we'll see teams going bust, then I'm happy with what we have. I'd love to hear your opinions on this because here at F1 Reverse, it has us all divided. Andretti's issues don't end with FOM and money though. You'll know by now that they're planning to enter with Cadillac as an engine partner, but creating an F1 engine isn't simple. It takes years of work and requires a massive knowledge base. As part of Andretti Autosport's entry plan to the sport, it had an agreement with Alpine for a partnership for power units as well as possible customer car parts. It is widely understood that this deal would act as a stepping stone for Andretti, while it worked together with GM and its Cadillac brand to help develop its own power unit in the longer term. However, after the FIA announced last week that it had accepted Andretti's entry, and it was now being passed on to FOM to consider a commercial deal, it has emerged that the plan for customer Alpine Renault engines is no longer in place. Alpine interim team principal Bruno Famine said at the weekend that the situation changed earlier this year, when its pre-arrangement lapsed. We had a pre-contract with Andretti, which has expired because they were supposed to be granted an F1 entry before a given date, he said. It means right now, if we want to do something with Andretti, we need to negotiate a full contract, a formal contract. So right now, we have absolutely no contract with Andretti. The FIA's decision on a new team was delayed by a number of months, and FOM's decision on Andretti is likely to take months as well. Famine explained that, after the option expired several months ago, there have been no further negotiations, and that there were no plans to resume discussions until it was clear from FOM that the Andretti entry was being approved. Everybody knows what the situation is, added Famine. We need something, and we need a decision from F1 before resuming with Andretti. Alpine were one of Andretti's only supporters, along with McLaren. With this deal no longer in place, though, their support for the entry is in question now that they won't be making money from selling engines and information to Andretti. While Alpine are still open to the idea of selling engines and parts to Andretti, the delays on their confirmation as an 11th team is causing problems. Famine admitted there were timeframe factors that had to be taken into account because there was a long lead time to get a customer engine project up and running. It could mean that if a decision is not made until early next year, it could be too late to get engines ready for 2025. I'm not talking about only Andretti, but we start the supply of parts for the season a very long time before, he said. Of course, depending on what will be the situation, there are some things we will be able to do, and some others we won't be able to. But for the time being, it's even useless talking about that, because let's see, we don't have the starting point. If FOM are to accept Andretti's entry into the sport, it needs to happen sooner rather than later. The team needs to start their preparations as soon as possible. We can't know what is happening behind the closed doors of Formula 1 management, but hopefully Andretti has been able to come up with a good enough argument to get granted entry to the sport. Do you think they can get past these massive issues to secure a space on the grid in the coming years? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.